What is a Kanban board? My name's Diana and I'm a client onboarding specialist at Bitrix24, one of the world's leading project management platforms. A Kanban board is a popular project management tool. It helps to visualize a project's workflow, fragment a large process into smaller parts that are easier to handle, create roadmaps and track their progress. The Kanban board is widely used in IT, tech, healthcare, publishing, manufacturing and lots of other fields. In this video, we'll go into more detail on what a Kanban board is, how to use a Kanban board, and show you a brief Kanban tutorial. Let's dive in. The first ever physical Kanban board was invented by Taichi Ono, a Toyota engineer in the 1940s. He noticed that supermarkets started to replenish their stocks, not when they ran out of goods, but when they were getting close to running out. Taichi proposed that Toyota's production process could use the same principle. Cards were introduced to Toyota assembly lines where they represented specific parts of the vehicle. When an employee saw that their colleague had drawn one of the last remaining cards of a specific type, they would hurry to replenish the stocks of the part that this card denoted. The scheme was intuitive and highly visual, and it helped to accelerate development cycles and decrease the amount of waste produced. At the beginning of the 21st century, Agile expert and technology consultant David Anderson introduced the Kanban approach to IT by publishing a book that went into detail on using Kanban in software development and project management. Kanban boards can be digital or physical. Nowadays, people mostly use the digital version. A typical Kanban task board consists of five components. One, columns. Each board has multiple columns, each of which refers to a particular phase of the workflow. Usually the columns contain phrases such as to do, doing, and done, or waiting, in progress, and completed. Team members can add cards to each column. Two, visual signals. In most cases, these signals are short fragments of text. The more concise they are, the better. Ideally, each team member should be able to understand what each card is about from first glance. Three, work in progress limits. Work in progress limits represent the number of tasks being worked on by the entire team or each individual member. These can be set for the entire board or per column. Four, commitment point. These refer to the stages that the cards or tasks on the Kanban board go through. For example, to do, doing, and done, as I mentioned for the columns. A task enters the workflow once you've placed it on a commitment point. Five, delivery point. Once completed, tasks move from a commitment point to the delivery point and are marked as finished. The structure of a Kanban board is intuitive. Once you introduce it to your workflow, it won't take your team long to figure out how it functions. Most Kanban software is visually appealing and very user-friendly, which is why the boards are becoming widespread in lots of different industries. When you start using a Kanban board, your first task will be to add columns to it. These might be to do, in progress, completed, and on hold. You can then start adding cards to each column. After that, you can move cards from one column to another, either by dragging and dropping them manually or by automating the process. The Kanban approach is based on a philosophy that boils down to the following rules and practices. One, encourage collaboration. Each team member should be able to fulfill their roles and responsibilities in the team. When someone has a question or faces a challenge, they should know who to ask for help. Two, welcome leadership. The Kanban approach is pretty compatible with the concept of decentralization. Every team member has a right to express their opinion and come up with their ideas. Three, be concise. Try to formulate your policies as unambiguously as possible and share them. Four, visualize the workflow as much as possible. Five, set limits. This mainly refers to the work in progress limits I mentioned earlier. In this case, limits do not restrain employees. Instead, they stimulate them to finalize tasks on time. Six, regularly check in on the workflow and promptly resolve bottlenecks. This way, you'll ensure your work process can run smoothly. Seven, review your progress. If something isn't working out, you can adjust and optimize your workflow accordingly. Eight, be open to experiments and innovations. These usually result in growth and improvements. Principles of Kanban and Agile complement each other very well. 
Kanban is all about continuous improvement and Agile focuses on continuous structured iteration. Kanban boards help the team to get rid of unnecessary activities and minimize the amount of waste. Agile helps to optimize the workflow and respond to changes. Both are designed for short work cycles and both foster ongoing communication and collaboration. The main difference consists in the fact that Kanban is more of a continuous flow of stages, whereas Agile is about small steps and iterations. Scrum is just a subset of Agile, but has its own unique defining features. The difference between Scrum and Kanban is that the former requires that you predefine roles and responsibilities, whereas the latter does not. What unites them is their focus on reducing waste and accelerating progress. The best way to implement Kanban principles to Scrum is to customize the board to the needs of a particular team and product. Bitrix24 is a free platform that comes with project management and CRM tools, which include a Kanban board. Register your free account using the link in the description or go to bitrix24.com today. Click here to watch our video on Scrum and click here to learn more about project management.